Hello, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, March 22nd. And today's topic is Apps, Tools, and Augmented Reality. Um, your show hosts are Peggy George, Lori Moffitt, that's me. I've got the blue mic next to my name. And Tammy Moore, who is doing our closed captioning for today. Thanks very much, Tammy, for doing that. Our special guest is Drew Minock, who will be um, presenting. Our live binder is at this web address. Uh, Peggy's going to be putting that in the chat soon. Notice that the individual tabs are on the left of the live binder rather than across the top. The recordings are always posted on the archives and resources page at live.classroom20.com slash archive dash and dash resources at dot html. Again, this link is not live, but it is live in the chat right now. Now I'll turn on the whiteboard tools again and please use the pointer to tell us where in the world you're logging in from. I'm logging in from Central Pennsylvania. I know Peggy's logging in from Phoenix, Arizona. Tammy's logging in from Southwest Arkansas. Paula's logging in from uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm not sure where Drew's logging in from. If you'd rather type in the chat, that's fine. We do have an international audience usually, and it's always great to see where everybody's logging in from. That's fine. You can use the pointer or type in the chat. We do have someone from Italy logging in today. Mostly from the United States. There is someone from the um, Eastern Hemisphere as well. Right here are the first of our polling questions. Uh, again, you use the icon next to the hand. You'll see these choices once you click on that icon. First one, do you or your students use iPads in your classroom? So I'll get, give people a chance to vote, and then I'll publish that to the whiteboard. And from those that voted, 44% do or your students use iPads in the classroom. The next question, have you used augmented reality, AR, in your classroom? Let me clear those first. Please now make this choice. And I will post those as well. And from those that voted, 46% have not used AR. Only 12% have. Our next question, have you used the mobile app AR flashcards in your classroom? And again, I'll post these to the whiteboard. Out of those that voted, 51% have not used AR flashcards. Again, I'd like to welcome you to today's show. 
our topic is Apps, Tools, and Augmented Reality with Drew Minock. And uh, I am Lori Moffitt along with Peggy George and Tammy Moore who are your hosts. I'm now going to turn over the microphone to Paula Noggle who will introduce Drew. Good morning everyone. This is Paula Noggle from New Orleans, Louisiana. And as always, I'm excited to be here and I'm very excited to introduce Drew Minock, who is an educator in the Bloomfield Hills School District and a rising star in the world of educational technology and motivational speaking. Drew is co-founder of the educational blog, Two Guys and Some iPads, and the Augmented Reality Meetup, AR Detroit. <clears throat> he has launched the popular educational podcast, The Two Guys Show, to inspire educators to reach new heights. He is currently serving on the Teacher Advisory Board for EdTech Startups, Remind 101, and Three Ring, and also serves as an educational advisor for DACRI, the world's leading augmented reality developer. I love following Drew um, in all of our social media connections, and I'm honored that he agreed to present for us today on the topic of apps, tools, and augmented reality. It is my pleasure to introduce a true game changer in today's guest presenter on Classroom 2.0 Live, Drew Minock. Thank you, Drew, for being with us. Thank you, Paula. I'm really excited today. Um, looks like we've got a lot of people who are unfamiliar with um, augmented reality today, so hopefully um, the apps and tools that I show you, you'll definitely be able to use in your classroom to really engage and, and transform the learning. Um, so let's go ahead and, and get started. All right, and Drew, our newbie question today is what is augmented reality and how can it change, I'm sorry, and how can it enhance learning in our classrooms? Take it away, Drew. Thank you. Um, there's a couple different ways that we like to uh, explain what augmented reality is, and I'll, I'll use those specific examples a little bit later in the, in the webinar, but um, augmented reality basically is the ability to take a stagnant analog format, like a picture of something, and enhance it with a video, a 3D model, something digital. So you're connecting the digital and the analog world together. Um, it's, it's like a QR code on steroids is the way that we like to explain it. Because with a QR code you need a URL, but with augmented reality you do not. And it's, um, it's extremely powerful. And so hopefully some of the, the examples that I give you later on today in this webinar will show you how it enhances learning in their classroom because it literally brings your learning to life. And um, it captures students and adults like, um, like no other tool that we've, I've used before in education. And um, just wait until you kind of start playing with it and you'll definitely understand how, uh, how it just completely transforms the learning. So like everyone has said, this is going to be apps, tools, and augmented reality. So uh, blow it up on Twitter as much as possible and share these resources as we go. So that's one thing that I really want to push as much as possible is share, share, share as much as possible on Twitter. Um, you can use the hashtag Two Guys Show. That's our our podcast. It is usually on Tuesday nights, which we will be off this Tuesday night, but back um, next week with one of the the higher ups and one of the um, main people at Erasmus. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at TechMinoc or at Two Guys Show, um, or you can email me at dmonoc1 at gmail, and of course you can always find us on our blog, Two Guys into MyPads.com. So everything that I talk about today will be on our blog as well. So Twitter is probably the best way to get a hold of me. And if I don't respond right away, I'm not ignoring you, so just, just tweet me again or send me a DM and I'll get back to you as quick as possible. Um, the first tool, obviously, is, is Remind 101. Remind 101 is a safe and secure way to text message um, your entire staff, 
your students, the parents of the students in your classroom. Um, you can do an entire group or as little as three people at a time, but no less than three people can you do. And currently, we are testing out some different ways where you can send pictures and documents, things like that, um, inside a text message. It can only be 140 characters. So as you see on the screen, definitely subscribe to the Two Guys Classroom 2.0 Remind 101 by texting this phone number, and you're going to text a message at Two Guys Class. And if you subscribe to that, our um, Remind 101 channel for today, I will text you a lot of the links and some information about this webinar later on today. So that's just another way of connecting with people and there's a lot of amazing ways people are using Remind 101 to, um, I know that I've heard stories about administrators who are setting up Remind 101s with their entire staff for emergency purposes. So if there's a lockdown, they just send a quick Remind 101 to everybody um, so they instantly get the text message, but you can also get it as an email if you would like to sign up for that way. So it's an amazing, powerful tool that, that completely changes the way that you can communicate with people. Because everyone seems to have a device on them at all times, but, you know, it's not the same as an email. People don't check their email when they go home, but they almost always have their device on them, which is great. Next thing that we're going to be talking about is Go Noodle. Go Noodle is phenomenal. This is something that we just started um, in probably the past month with my classroom. And if you scan that QR code, that will take you to a specific website that is uh, down here at the bottom that will give you the opportunity to sign up for a free account. And it's totally engaging. It gets the kids up. It gets them active. And it's, it's proven that these little brain breaks can definitely improve learning and comprehension. So they have a couple different activities. One is called airtime, where the kids are practicing their deep breathing and it's calming them. So that's what the main focus of it is calming. But you're also learning fun facts about different states around the United States um, as you go. Another one is called run with us, which is to energize your class. So if they're just, they come in and they're just in a lull, they're not really with it. You can get them up and you can get them doing the learning different activities with Olympians like Lolo Jones. And then after they learn how to do those specific activities, then they can actually compete in different competitions and things like that. And it's pretty fun. And they also have one to help focus. So if they're just off task and they're not quite with it, then you can get with Maximo is the guy's name. And it's, it's a, he's got this great accent and he's this fun uh, energy doing different stretches and things like that with the kids and they just have a blast and, it, and it's a great way to get them active and um, to really promote healthy learning and, and how being active can, can really help you as a learner and in everyday life. Um, you can also get to select a classroom champion or classroom champ, which is this funny character who uh, has a great sense of humor and always has funny jokes. And the more that you work out and do things, the they will grow, and you get to see, um, see your classroom champ grow. So it's a great tool to get them up and learning. Um, great brain breaks. They only take, you know, three to five minutes to do, but are a lot of fun. Great way to kind of start the day, that's for sure. So scan that QR code to head over and um, or just use the, the URL that is there, and I think Peggy put it in the chat room as well. So definitely uh, check out Go Noodle. Next is Canva. and uh, I'm definitely going to give a big shout out to Tech Ninja Todd, who Todd Nesloni, our good friend, who told me about Canva, and it is an awesome new tool. I believe it's in a beta version right now, but anyone, I think anyone can sign up. And um, if you do not sign up, then let me know, and I think I have some invites where you can you can get instant access for some reason if you have trouble. You can. It basically is a great way to make anyone a graphic designer. You can design posters, invitations, business cards, flyers. You can create presentations, um, Facebook cover photos, blog graphics. I mean, the list goes on. There's over a thousand different fonts now. There's simple templates where you just pick whatever template that you would like, 
and then you can go in and edit that template to um, create whatever you want. So it was great for us. We um, recently had a big exhibition at our school in fourth grade, because I'm a fourth grade teacher, where all the parents come in and they, they go around and um, visit the different exhibits. And we used Canva to create the posters and signs for it. And they're just, they look like they're professionally done, that's for sure. Um, so definitely head on over there. It's free. There are features where you can add things, and it's, I think it's like a dollar for this feature and a dollar for that feature. But I have yet to spend any money with Canva, and it's, there's so many features that are free where you can upload your own pictures and things like that to create your posters, and it is an awesome web tool. Um, I'm definitely not a graphic designer, but this allows me to be, so I would highly recommend heading over there and, and trying it out, letting your kids um, get on there and play with it and create different things. It does require a either a Facebook account, I think you can sign on, no, you can sign out with Google and Twitter, I believe, or Facebook, maybe. And so it does re require an email account. So for elementary, you know, kids who do not have an email account, you might have to uh, let them use your account or create a classroom account so that they can, they can be graphic designers and create some awesome logos and posters and things for your classroom. The next thing we're going to talk about is CargoBot. CargoBot is um, an app that was created solely on the iPad. So you can only get it on the iPad because it was created on an iPad using another app called Codia. CargoBot is free, and it teaches the basics of coding in computer science. It's a drag-and-drop interface. So as you can see on the, on the slide here, that these tools in the toolbox are the commands, and then you just click and drag them over to here, so whatever you want it to do. So at the top is the goal, and then at the bottom you have to move the boxes with this crane. And it's kind of like Angry Birds, with the more efficient that you are, the more stars that you can earn. So there's definitely, a, there's many different solutions to these, and that's one of the things that we love about it is, is that we have different groups of kids working on the same things, but creating and different solutions. And that's powerful when they sh go back and they share them later on, that you can actually see that there's more than one way, and there's several different ways to solve the same exact problem, which is something that is very powerful to um, elementary learners and learners in general, to find out that there is definitely more than one way to get to the right answer, and that's a good thing. Um, I had a parent come up to me last year who said, I am so mad at you. And, you know, everyone wants to hear that, right? Like, it wasn't even apparent in my classroom, so I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, what did I do? She looks at me, she goes, I am addicted to CargoBot. And I'm like, I will own that one. I will definitely take that one and be okay with it, you know? Um, so it's, they get very difficult, very fast. Um, but they start off with phenomenal tutorials to, to walk the students through each step um, on how to solve these, these complex puzzles. And it's teaching them loops so they can create different loops where, you know, you want it to go down, over, up, down, and then you can hit program one and it will loop and it will start it back over again. Um, I had a student last year, because if you can see up here in the top right button where it says hint, um, you hit that and it tells you how many registers it takes to be the most efficient or to get earn, earn three stars. And the most, and what it said is that there's eight registers. The quickest solution is eight registers. I had a student in third grade last year who solved it in four. So if you think about that, a nine-year-old found a solution to that problem that the creators of the game didn't even know existed. I mean, that is insane to think about that. It pops up in this big green writing. You have found a solution that nobody has found before. Please upload or, or record and upload to YouTube. It was so awesome to see our students' reactions when that happened. You know, I mean, again, the possibilities of just letting these students explore and play and, and try and solve them on their own is, is extremely powerful. But it's also great with 
we've seen it work with girls where the girls are really into it. The boys are equally as excited about uh, using this. And we also use analog format to where they actually have to write down their solutions on laminated sheets and try and solve them that way before plugging it into the iPad, which gives us the ability to, if Brad has all the iPads in his classroom is using them, that I can still do CargoBot in my classroom, which is, is really useful. So I can also put, um, I'll add that, that analog sheet to the Dropbox account at the later on. So if you scan that and head over to Dropbox and get the slides for this presentation, that you'll also get the, the analog format for CargoBot. And so again, great for computer science, which is a big push getting kids learning programming and computer science right now, um, coding. And I know my kids are excited about using this. They love using this application. Um, so highly recommend that. Even if you're an adult, give it a try because it can be very, very fun. Next up is Three Ring. Three Ring is definitely one of the game changers for me. Um, I've been using Three Ring for a couple of years now, and, and it's an amazing way to capture each learning moment throughout the day. You can create digital portfolios for each student and then share those, those learning moments in the digital portfolios securely with parents or students. Uh, if you share it with parents, they can only see their child's work which is really um, a, a huge feature because now we can take pictures of assessments and grade assessments, things like that, and the parents instantly have the feedback where I, it takes the problem of, you know, I lost it on the bus, the dog ate my homework, all of those things, because they can instantly now see it um, just by logging in. So every time that I share something with a parent, which can be a video, it can be photos, audio recordings, typed notes, um, or pictures and videos and things like that that are already on your device. And once you share it with them, it'll shoot them an email saying, hey, Mr. Minock is trying is shared an artifact with you on Three Ring, and it gives them a link to log in and um, view that artifact. If you look at this top picture here, you can see that Mr. Nesloni uh, visited our class and read to our class via Google Hangout. And so I was able to capture this moment of learning and share it with all of our class, or all, all of my parents, to kind of show them what we're doing throughout the day. It's great because, you know, it gives them great talking points so their children when they, when they get home, because everybody knows, you know, in fourth grade, when, when they go home and, you know, what did you do today at school? Nothing. It's the same response. I know I gave it, and I know they still, the kids do now. So um, this is great talking points where they can say, well, I know you didn't do nothing at school all day long, but, um, you know, I saw that you had a Google Hangout with Mr. Nesloni and he read you a book today. You know, what was that like? And it, I've had many parents explain to me that it, it, the kids get really excited when they know that things, something's been posted on Three Ring and that their parents were able to see it. Um, one parent shared with me last year, it makes them feel like a fly on the wall in their child's classroom. And it doesn't get any more power, powerful than that. You know, um, it's great for even when we go on field trips because a lot of times um, in our district, the parents in our community are both working, so they're unable to attend field trips. So we can take pictures of field trips and videos even without Wi-Fi inside the application and, and share them with them so they can actually feel like they are on the field trip. And even though I don't have a Wi-Fi connection, as long as I capture these moments of learning and these activities inside the app, it will store them up so as soon as you hit a Wi-Fi connection, it uploads them all. Another great feature is in the top you can see there's a search bar there so you can search in each tag. So as, as you're capturing the moments of learning, you'll hit like the student's name and then you can hit different tags. So if we're doing technology, if we're on a specific field trip, or it's a math assessment, you just hit that tag and then you capture the moment of learning. As you search those, if I wanted Michael's pictures for report cards or his assessments, I just type in Michael. His name will pop up. I select it. And then, boom, everything that Michael is tagged in will pop up. So now if I want Michael's math, I type in Michael. I type in everything I've tagged in math. 
and now everything that Michael has tagged in math will pop up. So it's great for parent teacher conferences, and it's also great for when you have to do report cards and things like that. Great tool, highly, highly recommend 3Ring, which again is another free tool. And I know I do, and I'm sure everyone else does, loves free. Another great way to create portfolios is EduClipper. EduClipper is a phenomenal website along with a, a great iPad app. And the iPad app is just getting better and better with each update. Um, Adam Bello is the CEO and founder of EduClipper. And it's just so exciting to sit down and talk to him. And, and he's so passionate about this. And, you know, the ability to explore and create and share the content um, is something that, you know, we always, we, that's something that we really want to do, right? We want to we explore different things. We want creation is so important, but the ability to share it out um, with the world and is, is extremely important. Um, you can create personal portfolios. You can also have your students um, share assignments with them and they can collaborate on class projects inside the, the website. They also have recently added a new whiteboard recording in, um, portion to the inside their iPad application. So kind of like, you know, there's many different whiteboard um, recording applications out there like explain everything and show me, but this is another great tool to actually be able to do it right inside an app where you can share it instantly um, with a clip. And you get to be able to create different clipboards. It's almost like a Pinterest, but for education. Um, and it's getting better and better. They just announced last night, actually, I saw that they will be coming out with a new iPhone app very soon. Not only that, but a whole new look to their website which will be awesome. And it'll be really interesting to see what that looks like because I really like the look of the website now. So definitely look forward to some of the awesome changes that are coming out with that as well. So definitely check out EduClipper. And it's also featured um, to where students can do it through Edmodo. So it's a free Edmodo app where the kids can, if they have an Edmodo account, they can um, access EduClipper through there. So definitely check that out. Next up, slides are moving a little slow, but that's okay. Explain a website. This is an app I, I discovered earlier this year, um, and it's by the, peop the creators of Explain Everything, which I do not have Explain Everything in this presentation, but Explain Everything to me is like a must-have. It is a phenomenal app. It's, it's $2.99, and it's worth every cent. Um, you will definitely not regret picking that up. This app is 99 cents, and it's a screencasting application where you can record different things and you can draw on top of it like you see um, down here in the bottom picture here. But you can do it like a laser pointer as you're recording and explaining things, and you can do it all on top of a website. So just by entering the, the URL at the top there or Googling things even, you can show exactly how to do different things and sign up for things. So this, I made one for uh, a great tutorial using this application to show my parents how to sign up for 3Ring. Um, it, you just go through and navigate the website just kind of like you normally would, but you'll be able to record the whole iPad screen as you're doing it, which I just think is awesome. And my parents had great feedback, um, and it really helped them because I know a lot of times it's, it can be a little confusing for um for people to, to know how to navigate different, certain websites and things like that. So quick tutorial, it's very easy to do. All you have to do is enter the website, click the record button, and, and you're on your way. So definitely give that a try. And again, it's only 99 cents in the App Store, so, so definitely head on over and check that out. I love Explain Everything, and you can export it into many different um, things as well. Okay, now it's time to have some fun. So we're going to start talking a little bit about augmented reality. And I know the newbie question kind of talked about, you know, what exactly is augmented reality? And we're going to really dive into that to start here. But the most, the number one thing I want you to know is the power of it. That is the one thing that you really have to understand is how powerful it can be. And I, 
I absolutely love this picture with this little kid over here. He's got his book stacked up and, you know, his pen and paper, and he just wants to rip his hair out. Um, and then you get the kid over on the right who's using AR where the 3D model is just popping out of the book. And, again, that's the thing I was talking about earlier is the ability to bring that learning to life is so awesome and interactive and engaging. And it, it just inspires the kids and gets them so excited. And that's, you know, one of our, our main jobs as educators. So these are the main ways that I like to explain augmented reality to people. So if you look at the picture over here on the right, that is inside of Hogwarts. And imagine if, if you're walking through the halls at Hogwarts and you look up, the pictures are not just pictures. They're not your stagnant, boring photos, but they're actually alive. They're interactive. Um, they talk to you, they talk, you know, and they're moving. They're not just your stagnant image, and that's what augmented reality does. It brings those stagnant images and brings them to life. Same thing with the newspaper in Harry Potter, where it's not just your normal newspaper, but it's actually alive, interactive, and it's moving, and, and that's what it is. Another way we like to explain it is the night at the museum. During the day, it's just your normal museum, but at night, those displays come to life. And that is what it does. Imagine having your classroom where the, the content on the walls can actually come to life. And it's, it's just an, a great environment and atmosphere to create. And the kids get so excited about it. So we're going to talk about different applications um, that you can use in your classroom. And we're not going to touch on all of the applications that you can use, but we're going to we're going to go over some pretty pretty awesome ones. First is Daiquiri. Um, Daiquiri is 4D technology. So most people think of 3D, you know, you go to the movie theater, you get your glasses on, they're extremely uncomfortable. And you're sitting there and you're just, you need the glasses and it's just a flat screen, right? And without the glasses, you won't be able to see the 3D material. But with Daiquiri and 4D, it's the ability to actually hold it in your hand, kind of like the element cubes that we're going to get to in just a minute, to actually hold it in your hand and interact with them and create a story um, or a medium, as they call it. In my mind, Daiquiri has the best content that there is out there, um, and they're constantly creating amazing new tools and ways um, to use augmented reality in education and recently released um, their 4D studio to certain people. So you can, you know, sign up to be a beta tester for that. I recently got my account logged in and I've been playing with it. And um, it's it's awesome. It really is. And so definitely head on over to daiquiri.com and, and try and sign up to get access to be a 4D, 4D studio is what, what they call it. So definitely sign, head over there to, to check it out and sign up. They have created what they call Elements 4D. And Elements 4D are wooden blocks. It was a Kickstarter campaign initially. And if you signed up and contributed to the Kickstarter campaign, you're able to get multiple different blocks. Um, and each side has a different chemical symbol representing the elements of the periodic table. Now, I don't know about you guys, but chemistry and these things in high school were literally just like nails on a chalkboard. They're boring. I didn't like just looking at the periodic table and trying to pull the information off it. It just, it wasn't for me. Now, if I had these cubes and I was able to actually put the elements in my hand and interact with them, I would have loved it. I would have absolutely loved chemistry. So you just scan the side that has the chemical symbol and it will actually change the cube into that chemical. So as you can see on the iPad screen here, that's what it is. Um, and not only that, but you can touch touch the um, the name once you scan it, and it will give you a bunch of information about that specific element. And then just by touching the blocks together, it will show you the chemical um, reaction, which is just so cool to experience firsthand. I do not believe you can actually get the wooden blocks anymore. But you can if you download the free app Elements 4D. Um, again, this is by Daiquiri. 
then you can print off six different paper blocks that you can create. And um, they're not the same as wooden blocks, obviously, but it's very easy to just cut them out. And if you had, can find some cheap wooden blocks somewhere and just maybe paste them onto the side of that, and that would work um, perfectly. But it's definitely an engaging and amazing way to learn about different elements in the periodic table. So highly recommend it. It will blow your mind the first time that you uh, you, you really experience it. And again, if you head over there, there's just inside the app, it'll tell you, you know, if you get blocks, you hit the button and you can go right into it. Now, one of the questions that was earlier was, how many people have used AR flashcards in their classroom? And this is an early childhood, you know, early primary grades, and it's great for ESL students as well for letter recognition. Now, I've taught kindergarten, I've taught preschool, and I so wish that I had these when I was a teacher um, in those grades because trying to get kids that are really struggling with that letter recognition and things like that, you sit a five-year-old boy down or a girl who has a lot of energy, because we know they all do in kindergarten, um, they're not going to want to sit there and look at flashcards. They're going to probably throw them on the ground. They'll be engaged for like two seconds. They're not going to want to do it. But if you can bring that flashcard to life, let me tell you, they're not going to want to get up. And we've seen it. So just by using the application, again, this one is free as well. There's 26 flashcards for each letter of the alphabet. And then at the end, there's six bonus dinosaur flashcards, which the students absolutely love to use. So you just scan the flashcard, and then the 3D model pops up. And then it, by touching the screen, it actually has like a kindergartner that comes up and will say, A is for alligator, B is for beaver. And it, it's an amazing way to engage the kids in letter recognition. Um, and it's so much fun. It really is. I was showing this to a group the other day, and, and this is a group of, of college professors. And as I was going, I was going to switch to something else, and someone yelled from the back, keep going, keep going. They were just as engaged as, as the five-year-old kindergartners are. So it's, it's pretty funny. Definitely check out AR Flashcards at arflashcards.com. And um, again, this is free. All you have to do is print them out in color and cut them out. In, fire up the app and start using them. They're also coming out with a way to where you can actually create your own flashcards and use their 3D models, which is going to be awesome once they get that out. And then also they're working on new new applications for uh, shapes and colors and math and U.S. presidents and geography. They're just, they're they're on a roll coming out with a lot of new things over the course of the year. So definitely be looking for that. Um, the Velociraptor that the picture shows you is by far my favorite. I love how the kid says Velociraptor. And so you definitely highly recommend checking out that, that card is that you will sit there and just laugh. It's so much fun. Um, another one from Air Flashcards is Air Flashcards Space, which is $2.99 in the App Store. And again, is is just awesome. Definitely worth it. Um, the picture on the right here is their solar system card. So you scan that and you get the entire solar system in scale. So the reason that this one's a little bit more money is because there's a lot more information involved in it. So each planet has their own flashcards, and there's one for the moon as well and the sun. And when you touch it, it gives you the name again, and the kindergartner is, is talking to you about it. But there's also a button that you tap, and it just gives you a lot of great information about each one. And Jupiter, like the Velociraptor, Jupiter is by far my favorite. Um, it, is, it is like the cutest kids in the world that are making these flashcards. I just absolutely, I love playing with them, and I'm 20, 28 years old. So um, definitely check these out. And um, again, you just print them out after you download the application and fire up the app. And, and yes, someone just said in the chat, I am a big kid. There's no no doubt about that. I'm not ashamed to admit it. <clears throat> the next AR app is Color Mix. Color Mix is a bunch of coloring pages. And they have, I think, nine free coloring pages now that are out. They have just your basic um, 
couple of few that they came out with, and then they came out with like a holiday pack for New Year's and, and Christmas um, that you can print out. You can just color them, and the way that you color it is the way that the 3D model will appear once you scan it with the app, which is, it just, it really blew our minds the first time that we started using it because it's so much fun. They also have a couple of other packs, the Volume 1 pack and the Dover pack that are $2.99 each where you get, I think, 12 more, um, 12 more coloring pages. And I'll, I'll never forget, like, our good friend Aaron Klein who just, who was giving me grief one time because it was like 11 o'clock on a Saturday and here I am, I'm sitting there, I'm like coloring. But again, I guess I'm a big kid, right? So definitely check this app out where you can color different coloring pages and then they come to life um, with the 3D model the way that you, the way that you scan them or the way that you color them, I mean. Also, we use it for different ways. Obviously in fourth grade, if I had my students sitting there coloring, I would probably hear about it and they would not care about it too much, the parents or my administration. Um, so again, what we, it, trying to get our fourth graders, especially the boys, to write sometimes is like pulling teeth. So we wanted to find a way to really get them engaged and make writing fun and exciting for them. So um, at the beginning of the year, I put all of the pages out, like about all 20 of them, and I said, you have choice. This is, you can pick, pick any one that you want color it first, and then you need to use that coloring page to inspire a creative story. So as they're writing their stories, they're, they're, abs they're having so much fun. They're kids that usually do not even enjoy writing were creating awesome stories. And the fun thing was is that they, they were so excited to share their stories later on. Even kids that never share wanted to share their stories. And this was before I showed that, or um, brought them to life with the augmented reality. So they start creating their stories, and then I ask them to stop. And you know that your lesson is awesome when you ask them to stop, and you just get that, oh, come on. You know, and they're like begging to go for more. So that's kind of how the lesson was going. But as soon as I brought it to life and showed them how it can pop out with a 3D model, their reaction was literally priceless. And they just wanted to dive right back into their stories and add more details and revise and share even more. And it was so much fun. That was probably one of the, the best lessons I've ever, ever had in my classroom, just that was educational, yet it was so much fun and engaging. So highly recommend it for using to uh, inspire creative writing. Next up is a brand new um, AR coloring application. It's called Chromeville. And as you can see in this picture, um, our good friend, again, Todd Nazzoni, was up visiting last week. And so I had him in my classroom and I had him coloring pictures, of course. So um, he colored this one and it's a, they have different, I think there's six different um, worlds or there you go, villages. and each village is going to have different chapters. Right now, there's only one chapter. They're um, kind of like beta testing them right now. But you can head download Chromeville and, and go to their website and print out the coloring pages. They recently just released two more, I believe, just the other day. Um, and they're definitely very, they're, they're quite a bit different than Color Mix. They're the same in the, in the fact that they're coloring pages and that they come to life, but the, they're very different looking when they, when they pop up. So. Um, Again, the way that you color them is the way that they will look when they, um, when they come to life, per se. So head on over, check out Chromeville. It's, it is a lot of fun. Again, this is something where I'm, I'm sitting here as soon as I found it. I'm like printing them out as soon as I can and, and coloring them. Um, obviously, everyone probably thinks I just spend all my time coloring pages, which, you know, isn't totally against the truth, I guess. But um, definitely check it out. It is a lot of fun. and. Again, use these to inspire creative stories. And they've got a cool kind of background to it um, on their webpage and story about each one and, and kind of their idea. So definitely check it out. AR is not, not exactly another name for 3D, but it, it incorporates 3D in a way. Um, Erasma is kind of like the cream of the crop when it comes to augmented reality and education, in our opinion. Um, it's the only one that allows you to 
actually create your own augmented reality inside their mobile app along with their studio account, which is online. Um, you can create create the augmented reality inside the app, but you can only like add pictures and add photos to targets that you select. So as you can see in the picture, we use this is like during our exhibition like I was talking about earlier. Um, this is from last year. This is outside Brad's class, Brad Wade's class. And we had a routine called the step inside where the students actually have to like step inside the shoes and write from the perspective of someone else. Um, and this is a Native American uh, that they had to step inside. And in the past, you can see the pictures. Um, they just draw a picture at the top, but then, then they have to write about, um, write from the other person's perspective. And in the past, it, again, it's been, you know, kind of a not very engaging lesson where the kids aren't really that into it. But actually having them step inside the shoes and act it out as you're recording it. And then we took that video and tagged it to the front of that step inside. So when the parents came around, instead of just reading it, now they actually just took the iPad and put it over the the poster that the kids created and were able to see the kids kind of acting it out and actually stepping inside the, the shoes of, of that character. And it was so engaging for the kids and, and they were really into it. They were so excited to create the videos. Um, and it just adds that much more to your lesson. It makes it that much more engaging and deepens the learning that much more. Um, I use it for um, homework mini lessons. So we have um, everyday math is our math program. And so it's a very language-based program. And if the students don't get the language and the vocabulary, then they have a very difficult time with the lessons. So what we're noticing is the language is very different from when I learned it in elementary school, the same concepts, and definitely different than when the parents learned it. So when the parents are trying to help their students at home with their homework, they are they're having trouble explaining it because it's different vocabulary than we used in class. And you know, and then you get it, well, that's not the way that my teacher said it was, you know. So I just made the homework assignment the trigger image and then used explain everything to do a just a quick one, one and a half minute um, mini lesson tutorial and tagged it over top of it. So now when the kids go home, it actually brings their homework to life. It looks like I'm I'm talking to them and drawing right on top of their homework assignment and giving them just a quick refresher so that kid that didn't understand the concept that day or needed a little refresher um, was able to get that. And they can watch it over and over again as many times as they want. And from doing this, I've seen homework come back more often and definitely the kids are grasping the concepts much more. And then in the end, obviously, the test scores were definitely has improved. So. Um, it's a great way to, to make homework kind of an engaging, given an engaging element to it as well. Um, you're, the one thing about augmented reality is you're really only limited by your imagination. I know that, I mean, we're just a couple of guys that have come up with different ways to use it, but there's so many amazing people using it in amazing ways around the country and around the world. Uh, Brad Gustafson uses Erasmus to communicate with his kids on baseball cards. Um, that he sent home before the school year to get him excited for the school year. He also is working with um, Heather Cooper out of Texas to do the World Book Talk. So the kids are reflecting and giving a book talk after they read a book and tagging that video to the cover of the book um, so that kids in, um, that are interested in that book are getting a, a summary and feedback from someone their age, which is, is pretty awesome. So definitely check those people out and what they're doing with Erasmus. And again, I'm a studio guy. I create more in online because there's so many more things that you can do with it. You can make the, the auras that much more engaging and, and interactive with um, sequence auras and digital click, you know, click throughs to where if I touch one part of the screen, it can call you. If I touch another part of the screen, it can send text messages, add up things to calendars, take you to a website. It can, it can pretty much do whatever you want it to do which is pretty amazing. So again, you are only limited by your imagination with Erasmus. And they recently have announced that they are developing a Google Glass app along with um, revamping their entire studio to where you can make an aura in seconds. So definitely check that out. Um, AR on glass. Now, 
Google Glass is a big thing right now, and they're starting to come out with more and more augmented reality applications for it. So Layer had just announced just the other day that they came out with their their app for um, for Google Glass. And if you go to their website, they do an awesome job of explaining how to actually get the application, putting it on Glass, which I've tried to do before unsuccessfully, and their their steps made it very easy to uh, upload Layer onto my Google Glass. Um, this is probably a, my favorite example that they have on their website. So if you just scan, I would just say, okay, Glass, scan this. And it will scan the picture on the left of Banff um, National Park up in Canada. And it will give you a perspective like you're actually standing right there. So if I look to the left, I can see the mountain range to the left. If I look down, I see the rocks. If I look over to the right, I see the mountains over on the right and the trees. And it is a very cool experience. Um, I did some videos this morning and, and put them in Dropbox. So at the end, uh, there will be a QR code that you can scan to get all of the slides from today's webinar, as well as um, some videos and examples of, of some of the things that I've talked about today, including the, a screencast of, of layer on glass. And it's just so cool, and it's just they're just scratching the surface of what Google Glass can really do, especially with augmented reality. So I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. So I'm going to leave you with this, is that it's what you learn after you know it all that matters um, by John Wooden. And John Wooden, in my mind, is one of the, the smartest people to ever live. Um, this guy, he, he, just, he just got it. Highly recommend his book. Um, it's probably the most inspiring book I've ever ever read. I recently got Tech Ninja Todd uh, hooked on it, and it's it's so true because once you think that you've learned it all, you really haven't, and that once you learn, it's the things after that that are really going to capture you. Um, so definitely check out his book, and just like to thank everybody for joining the webinar today. Um, it was fun to kind of sit and hang out with you for an hour, and um, hopefully some of the things that I showed will inspire you to give them a try. Um, it's it's hard to really show you the power of augmented reality without showing you videos, so definitely um, when you when you go to this URL, um, Dropbox account, when you scan the QR code that's about to pop up, um, it will take you there to where you can see different videos, and I'll make sure all the videos are in there. And the ones that aren't in there, you can head over to our blog, twoguysandsomeipads.com, and um, check them out there as well. We have many different videos and tutorials on how to do things, so um, definitely check those out. And hopefully you had fun today, as fun as I did, and took away some great things. So thank you for joining us. And I think we're going to do some, some Q&A here shortly. So uh, if you have any questions, I would... Definitely reach out to me on Twitter. I will help you as much as I can. Um, and I just really, I love hearing different examples of how, how you're using it. So please, please um, share what you're doing. Share how your students are creating it. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks so much, Drew. I did manage to capture some questions. If I don't ask yours, please type it again in chat. Um, Starting from the first one, is CargoBot an app for iPad or a computer site? Uh, it is an iPad only application. Okay. That's what I thought you said, but I thought I'd ask the question. Mm -hmm. uh, has anyone used AR for high school classes? Yes, I know. Um, we actually got an amazing email from a teacher in the Upper Peninsula here in Michigan who said that literally he's been been searching for a tool to really capture his his uh, his high school classes and he showed them Erasmus and he's like they were they were like kids they were literally so excited about the way things that they could create um, I did a, an interview yesterday with a high school group that used it for their art showcase so each art piece was tagged with Erasmus it would the the artist explaining their piece and, and some logic behind it and things like that. So, um, yeah, I've heard of many different high school classes using it, yes. Good. How about middle school science? 
Middle school science, I mean, there's different things that you could use. Um, with daiquiri, you know, the element cubes is a fun way to kind of explain it. Um, but with middle school, again, with erasmus, it's really, you're, you're limited by your imagination. You can really do whatever you want with it to make, make it more engaging, I guess you say. And definitely just let the kids, get it in the kids' hands and see, and talk to them about it. See what they think that they can do with it. And, and really that's where the most power comes. Um, let's see. Someone just recently tried Erasma, it looks like, just tried it on Friday. Uh, where can this person post when they have what they want to post? I guess I don't, I don't know what the question exactly is. So do they, they, tr do they try it? Is it in the chat? Where can I post it when I do, when they have completed whatever it is they want? After they create the URL, they add it to a channel, it's called. Okay. And then anyone who follows that channel can then view the aura with, um, as long as they have the trigger image. So it'll, okay. it'll store it right in, it, it stores it in the cloud. And then if you just follow that channel, then you can go ahead and, um, and view what people create. And does Erasmus have tutorials to walk through this process? I have to, I've, I've created tutorials for about every step that you can think of when it comes to Erasmus. Okay. Uh, okay. To following channels, to creating channels and everything, and they're all on our blog under um, AR Tutorials. Okay, good. Yeah. And actually Erasmus reached out to us and actually used our tutorials on their support page. Oh, that's, that's very nice. Yeah. Uh, Rose, your hand is up. Would you like to get on the mic to because that was your question that I tried to ask about the, where to post. You now have the mic, Rose? Yep, can you hear me? Sure can. Okay, um, what I was trying to explain was we had used the RASMA to create um, projects to represent what we had learned in our unit. And the kids came up with their RASMA, but the problem was when I took, it wasn't a problem, but I was trying to find a way so that you wouldn't have to use Erasma to view the projects. So I put them in a Dropbox and I used my phone to capture their Erasma, but I tried to record it using Jing or some type of screencasting so that if, when I put it on a wiki to be viewed, you wouldn't have to use the app to see the work. Did, have you tried doing that? Um. I have not tried doing that. I've used the screencasting and things like that to kind of show the augmented reality um, and just to kind of so people can kind of see how it works. Um, I can see where that would, would work if that's the way you're doing it, but the, the way I would do it, I guess, is I, I create like a QR code to where if someone scans it, they just automatically follow your channel. And then um, I just put the trigger image on your site so that way they almost have to use it so that they can experience the same kind of fun that the augmented reality brings as everyone else that's actually there. So I, we have a whole page on section on our blog called Triggers where it's just different trigger images that if you follow our channel that you can just hold your phone up to the computer screen and interact with them and see funny videos or whatever. So I mean that's the way that I would do it but the way that you did it would, would work too I would imagine. I'm just thinking, you know, when uh, most people aren't familiar with QR codes and they're not quite there yet, or especially using AR, I was trying to find a way to get them to see the project even without having the tools to see it. So that would turn them on and, you know, encourage them to actually look into that, uh, look into the uh, application more. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I would imagine using Jing or something, some sort of screencasting tool like that would work um, to kind of show them what the experience is like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm going to finish that up and see what it looks like. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Rose. Sure. Here's another question in chat. Are most of these programs for the iPad or can this person find Droid and Windows programs as well? Um you know, I have a Microsoft uh, Surface and there's not a lot out for Surface right now. Mm -hmm. But um Almost all the apps that I showed are for Android as well, yes. Okay. Okay. There was a question 
concerning lucid chart um, and that person might want to get on the mic if you please raise your hand I can give you the the microphone thanks Brad go ahead Got to push the talk button to talk, please. Oh, there we go. There, it's working. Hi, Brad. Thank you so much. Thanks, Drew, for the presentation. I, I think you uh, kind of set the bar for uh, for me next week, so I appreciate that. Awesome. Um, I wanted to ask you. Uh, so, Lucid Chart is kind of an online diagramming and, and programming program uh, in your browser. It does mind mapping and things. Uh, based on your understanding of AR, I mean. This is my kind of first foray into AR uh, in terms of education. Do you think, just kind of based on that real brief description, that that would be, you know, that when I'm talking about Lucid Chart, uh, that that's kind of an appropriate uh, classification of the program? Lucid Chart? Yeah, it's um, you can create uh, Venn diagrams or mind maps. Um, it's it's kind of more. It's not necessarily uh, you can you can create uh, dot, you know you can create stuff to be published to the web or you can collaborate with other people in your classroom inside the browser. Okay. Uh, and we have another program called Lucid Press. It's very similar to Canva uh, that you covered, um, and so I think that's probably um, right up your alley in terms of uh, in terms of you know creating um, graphical. Um, presentation kind of quality uh, stuff to share with others, but um, I was just curious what your thoughts were on the diagramming and, and mind mapping. If you if you kind of consider mind mapping uh, kind of AR, uh, I don't consider mind mapping really AR, but um, I could see where you could use AR to make the mind mapping that much more engaging. I guess um, you know there's different diagrams and things like that, even like blueprints. You know where you can. You just have your stagnant image of a on a paper of a blueprint, but as soon as you use AR, it, it puts that whole 3D model on top of the the page, where you can like literally see how every single thing would look inside the house. And um, I mean, you could use it with the mind mapping of where the mind map or the or whatever is the or the web is the trigger image, and then when you scan it with AR, that above each one of those circles or whatever that thing would pop out of it and make it more engaging and does that make sense? No, that totally does make sense. And I, I I didn't feel like it quite uh reached the the kind of requirements, but I just wanted to hear from you kind of what the, the difference was. Oh, okay. I didn't even heard of a lucid chart, but I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, uh, a lot of people are using it. The the main benefit is uh that it's it works in your browser. Um so, like you were asking, people were asking before, like kind of what computer programs it works for, what kind of operating systems it works on. There's mm -hmm. an iPad app, and uh, it's completely free. There's there's no cost for any educator. Well, I like free. Thank you, Brad. No problem. Thanks, Drew. I did capture another question. Uh, what about poor access to the internet? Could someone download a library and allow students to use in class without access to the internet? Um, certain apps like Erasmus and Daiquiri do require um, mm -hmm. internet access for the the trigger because it's in the cloud. But right. there are certain apps where you do not need internet access, like the Flash AR flashcards and Color Mix. You do not need internet access, um, which is really nice with schools that. You know, struggle with the infrastructure of and bad Wi-Fi, and I definitely understand that. Mm -hmm. and I know that people have had trouble with it. So it's, I don't think you can really download a library per se, because you you need you need the internet access for Erasmus and for Daiquiri, but the other ones mm -hmm. will definitely work without it. Okay, thank you. Those mm -hmm. were all the questions that I was able to capture. Um, as well as some that came through chat afterwards. Does anyone else have any questions? Are the apps accessible for the disabled student 
And um, how would you know? How do you know? I don't know if there. I know that there's different um, ways people are using augmented reality to um, with students with disabilities. Um, for example, I know that you know there's different things with autism, and there's mm -hmm. a whole article about how they're using Erasmus and, and using different trigger images around the classroom and, and even at home to help uh, help students with autism and things like that. I'll have to find that article and and tweet it out, but. Um, I'll, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not. Sh I'm not sure of some other, some specific applications for um, disabled students. Mm -hmm. But they're all and accessible to them. I would say. I would think. Um, how do we get you to come and run a PD for our school? That was someone's question. Um, just email me. I'd love to come and, mm -hmm. and do a PD. Um, we do workshops and. And presentations all around the country, and would love to love to come out and do PD. So definitely send me an email at dmenock1 at gmail com, and I'd love to chat about coming and doing PD. That's terrific. I think those are all the questions. I'm okay. going to go ahead and do the the wrap up now. All right. The upcoming shows are on this slide, March 29th, Lucid Chart with Brad Hanks. And uh, Patty, would you like to take the mic? I can find Patty. <laughs> oh, so that would be Patty? Brad that we just talked to then. Right, that's right. Cool. Oh well, um, I'm excited about next week's show, but uh, Brad was in the room, so he was. if you need a little teaser, let Brad talk. Um, I'm not sure if Brad still has the mic. No, he does. Go ahead, Brad. Okay, thank thank you. Um, well, Drew, uh, thanks again for um, sharing all of these great tools with me. It kind of gives me a context of maybe how we, we uh, our two offerings kind of fit in a broader landscape of uh, educational tools. So um, thanks, thanks for that. Um, I'm also, I feel really privileged to be able to speak in this kind of forum. Um, anytime you get educators together on the weekend when they could be doing, you know, any number of things, uh, you know that you're talking to kind of a higher uh, class of, of uh, participants. So um, but basically uh, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, is kind of showing you Lucid Chart, which is an online diagramming program. Um, and the, uh, the background uh, for this is basically um, we had a, a programmer, uh, our, our founder was creating uh, Visio documents, which is a Microsoft suite diagramming program. Um, and there was no way to uh, share in any kind of meaningful way with other people without them buying really expensive licenses. Uh, and so he said there had to be some kind of way to, for people to create diagrams and um, share in real time with other people, and there just wasn't anything out there. So uh, what, it, what it basically allows you to do is create diagrams, flow charts, mind maps, Venn diagrams. You can create interactive documents. Um, so for example, you can mock, you can mock up an app, uh, an iPhone app or a, uh, an iPad app. Um, and uh, and then go into demo mode and then demonstrate kind of how you would interact with this app. Uh, you can publish that demo document to the web, um, and uh, you can have uh, you can have multiple people in the same document at the same time. And uh, hopefully, uh, working with Peggy, I'm going to be able to demonstrate that. So I'm going to create a link where anyone can join this document, um, and you'll be able to kind of join in live. Uh, while I'm demonstrating, you'll be able to join the document and look at it and interact and you can chat. Uh, there's document presence, so if you ever use Google Docs, um, it allows you to see what other people are doing uh, in the size of the same document so you don't step on someone's toes. Uh, it integrates with Google Apps, um, so it, it works really well with um, dashboard programs like Hapara, which is already kind of, I guess, used in k um, control. So anyways, it's, I'm pretty excited. Uh, we're going to be giving away um, some swag, some Lucid Chart and Lucid Press swag. So we're going to give away some T-shirts and some 
jump drives. Um, I joked with some of my coworkers that we should, you know, take some team pictures and, and sign them. Um, uh, for other people uh, to have, uh, this is kind of a, I don't think anyone really want that, but it was, I thought it was funny. Um, and then, uh, so if you want to kind of, uh, we want people to share on Twitter, obviously, the hashtag that we're going to use to kind of follow the conversation is go lucid. Uh, so hashtag go lucid. And if you want to kind of let people know about it, it's a fun way to share. And then what I'm going to be doing is looking at everyone that used the hashtag and kind of randomly selecting you know, four or five people to get a Lucid chart or a Lucid Press shirt, which is another program that we make uh, that well, I won't be covering, but, um, and then maybe some Lucid chart uh, jump drives. So I feel like I've talked too much already, but um, I'm not sure how to give it back to someone else. Lori, go ahead. I thought I'd already clicked on talk. Sorry about that. Uh, after the 29th and April 5th, Aaron Klein will be the future teacher. April 12th, Donna Roman will be the future teacher. April 19th, there's no show because of Easter weekend in the United States. And then April 26th, also no show because of the Den virtual or vir spring virtual conference. Steve Hargagon's newest effort is the Learning Revolution Project, and he has gathered together all his resources at one location, including bringing back the Host Your Own webinar. You can host your own Blackboard Collaborate session uh, from the Learning Revolution Project. If he like to nominate a feature teacher, you do so on this form, the tinyurl.com slash CR2O live feature teacher nominate without the E at the end. You can also nominate yourself to be a feature teacher. When you exit the show, a link to a survey should come up at tinyurl.com slash CR2O live survey. The link will be in the chat box as well as in the, the live binder. So if you go to the live binder after the show, you can get the, the link to the survey. At the bottom of the survey, you can request a professional development certificate. Uh, please use a personal email address to receive this. Sometimes school email addresses block the uh, request from coming back to you. So there's also a survey link if, for some reason, it doesn't open in your browser. The audio and video collection for the recordings are on iTunes U. You can subscribe to the, the sets, the video collection separately from the audio collection, or subscribe to both and have them on your um, mobile device. In addition to that, there's an RSS feed for the show archives as well that's available on the Classroom 2.0 Live website. Special thanks to our special guest, Drew Minock, to Steve Hargadon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution to Weebly.com for providing the website and to everyone who participated in the show today and also to Blackboard Collaborate who provides our platform for these weekly shows. Again, thank you all for coming. In order for that recording to process, everybody does need to leave the show. If you are new, you exit this platform just as if you're exiting a program. On a PC, it's the upper left or upper right corner. On a Mac, it's an upper left corner. And again, thank you for coming.